Wait, what, what specifically are you talking about? Just just talking about that? Stump, in general? Stumpers, what's going on? Today we're going to be touching on some NFL football. <laughs> Stu is recording off his phone, so he's going to sound weird. He looks really fucking weird. Everything is weird. Uh, now we're going to be touching NFL football. We're going to be talking a little bit of NBA, but not taking away from all ball. Uh, you guys mind if I just appreciate Peyton Manning and the Manning cast and how incredible it is? Absolutely. There's a lot to appreciate with that. It's a lot of fun. Stu, have, have you had a chance to watch? I know you've probably watched clips on Instagram. Uh, have you had a chance to watch any of it? Yep. It sucks that the zone doesn't have it, but we found a stream on uh, for the last game, which is awesome. It's an idea that I've, I've always thought would be awesome is live podcasts that you play all over like a game and it's them doing the commentary on the game and that reminds me of this idea where it's just just the manning brothers doing their own thing during the game like that i think it's just such a wonderful idea if that was like an app i I think like barstool really really got it got it first with sports and this stuff with like the electric chair stuff they do watch like watching fans watching games this is just this on steroids this is like right they're just watching like the to me the greatest quarterback of all time and his nerdy younger brother uh i i love everything about it something someone mentioned to me and i don't know if this is true or if i believe it is that my generation which is millennials can actually do this comfortably because we are the Twitch generation. We watch people play video games. Why wouldn't we watch someone talk to us as there's a football game going on? Why do you think podcasts have exploded is my generation? Second thing, Ty, is I appreciate the, you know, what Eli did. What Eli did dropping the double bird. That's like really more up your lane. Like if we were at a bar and Eli were to come up and try to talk, I'd be like, dude, you're boring as fuck. Does it, does it, like I, I don't want to watch Eli. I would rather watch Peyton because he dissects the game. He reminds me a lot of me on this podcast where he almost has to bring people back to the conversation. And I've noticed that yeah. they have guests come on and Eli is going like really far down left field talking about his armpit stains yada 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 and Peyton just brings it back being like this is the coverage that so and so is reading I I appreciate it I think I just have such a bias to Peyton Manning no matter what he does I'm gonna really really appreciate it and I'm gonna slam the table if Drew Brees had the same thing going on like the Brees cast yeah I would secretly enjoy it I wouldn't I wouldn't come out I wouldn't be arguing with people about it I'm just really in on Peyton and I think he looks at the game so much differently than Mm-hmm. 99% of the world. I obviously want to hear him. You know what I mean? He's also got a great chemistry with his brother because his brother looks and sounds and behaves like a fucking idiot. But Peyton Manning just, he can, it, he just bounces off that. And he's just such an entertaining figure. And Eli is just kind of like, he's almost comic relief. Like Peyton Manning's like smart, funny. And he like, he like you just look at him. When he's not saying anything, he just looks like he's like lost. <laughs> no, I agree. But uh, Eli, Eli's a lot more silly too. I mean, I get what you yeah. mean too. You're probably right, man, because like also they did like the like the Shakira like hip thing or whatever. That was such a like a, a cringy line he gave after he did it. Yeah, I understand. Like he might come up to the bar and be like, yo, Eli, like fuck off. You're being weird, sort of thing. So maybe not. Maybe I don't want to hang out with them, but uh yeah, uh Still, it's fun. I think it's fun anytime you get to see celebrities like a, like a, sorry, like a superstar talk as far as like commentating a game. They've done that for years, though, right? Like with hockey, basketball, they have like the like superstars come down and broadcast and like I guess like color commentate as they as they go on. You would call it They're usually on the panel, on the panel, not, not like not like in game commentary. No, M- NBA does that, man. They have like this like they'll have players like Chris Weber will come in and just start talking, right? Like is is that not like a thing? Am I, am uh, I, yeah, I, I remember. I'm sorry. I, yeah, as like guest appearances. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking more like in TNT, they'll have like somebody who's already been eliminated from the playoffs or like all oh, that. Yeah, yeah, somebody, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's like what you're talking about, Ty, is like Reggie Miller, Chris, Chris Weber, actually being the color guys of actual games, right? I, I, yeah. I'm using that as kind of an easy name, but I just feel like those like they'll have guys just come in though in like the middle but of the game, just guest appearance, like he was saying though too. That does that's pretty that's pretty common, right? Yeah, like in baseball, somebody will come in in like the fourth inning and just hang hang out for the inning, and yeah, 
yeah, they'll they'll provide some color to the not to just, but yeah, it's not really the they're not color commentators, it's just kind yeah. of like they're just like a segment. Yeah, not to not to shift it too much, but like I think that's a really good thing that baseball does. Anytime I'm like, I don't know what what afternoon that is they do that, but they have like every inning or whatever. There's a certain inning they they have like the players like talk to the broadcasters for like an inning or two or something like that. That was a really yeah. fun thing I saw in baseball because again I don't really watch it much. I was like, this is something that could like I don't know could bring me in on a Sunday afternoon to hear what like Rizzo has to say or something. That guy's funny as fuck anytime I see him. So Sunday, it's it's Sunday nighters that they do Sunday that. nighters. Okay, yeah. Uh, I will say, I think I was way ahead of the curve than a lot of like casual NFL fans. What Payne is doing is like a poor man's Tony Romo. Tony Romo is the best commentator, color guy in the NFL. Tony Romo could jump on that Manning cast and probably make it even fucking better. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, you know yeah. I mean? And I, I, I'll never take credit away from what Tony Romo is doing. Tony Romo is like, I think, the top color. It's color guy, right, Stu? There's play by play and then there's color. He's color, right? Yeah. I, I think, I, yeah, I'm just confirming. I think like Troy Aikman's shit. I, I don't really appreciate the stuff he says. There's not many guys out there. Um, do you guys, I, I do want to challenge Tyler to move to Toronto before week five. So maybe we can record a live episode of the stump during Colts Ravens. Okay. I think that's in two weeks, Tyler. So challenge on. That's two uh, weeks. That's two weeks. So get your fucking shit going. We, um, could, we could probably make that happen. No, you were supposed to be in Toronto in September. Anyway, so... That's not we- true at all. <laughs> it was always <laughs> November 1st. Stumpers, I promise, my integrity stands. I will be there November 1st, as I said. Integrity. My man integrity <laughs> stands. <laughs> do, do, you guys, do you guys see, like, another network picking up Eli and Peyton and making this, like, a permanent thing? Or do you think this is just, like, a 10-week experiment? What do, we, what do you guys see this becoming before we harp on it too much? Is it not only... Is it not for the full year? It's 10 weeks. Oh, I thought it was the entire year. Fuck. Apparently, apparently, he didn't want to do Tom's game, and that's week 11. And that's where the, the go. I don't believe it. I think that was just. I have a question. I haven't watched it. Like, I actually haven't watched. I've just seen the clips and shit. Are they doing it to where, like, are they going to do it? You still see the good, like, like um camera angle of the game, right? Like you see the normal game camera and then they're yeah. just commentating over. It's not just like that fucking it's, box thing, them talking beside it. It really is essentially like a Twitch stream. It is. It's Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. See, like which I, is kind of awesome. I don't I guess people like that. I don't I still like the old school version of like watching a game. I like the old camera views and stuff. If they were just like, if it was just them commentating over the game, absolutely. But if I have to see like their faces in the bottom and stuff like that, I haven't I honestly just haven't adapted as a person like that to watch games like that yet. I'm sure. not into it. It's on the side. So I mean, I'm, I'm not into it. It takes me out of the game. I don't have the attention span for that. <laughs> it, I, and you know what, Ty, you hit the nail on the head. The guy I disputed this with, I said, you cannot walk and chew gum. Because I can have Payne Manning, Eli, and LeBron James on the left side of the screen. And I know when to look at the three dummies. I and I, know no, I couldn't do it. Game. I couldn't do it. I'm, you know what I mean, Stu? Yeah. Like, like, yeah, no, 100%. I, 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 if the Jays were on right now, the Jays could be on in the background. And I could be recording a podcast. I could do two things at once. And I think... And it has nothing to do with generation. I think it's just a person. I think listening listening to them, there is time. There's just conversation. They're, they're just talking about fucking whatever. LeBron James played tight end at one point. A rush for three yards. If you watch normal broadcasts, there's a bunch of fluff. There's a oh, bunch yeah. of fluff. But like, you know, of- but they don't really – they don't take the, the attention off the game for the fluff. I guess, you know what I mean? Like, I guess like sometimes they do, like, the camera yeah. in the booth. But it's never – but with the games on, the game's on, you know? And that's – that's what that's what takes me out of it, I guess, and I and I think it's more of a fault of my own. I just can't sep- I can't comp- compartmentalize it. But like that, to me, I'm like I don't want to see that. I don't. I want to just hear them talk. That'd be great. I don't want to see their faces, and it's, it fucks me up too. I can't even fucking focus on us talking if you throw a chat up in the Zoom call, right? So like, I just, there's no way I can handle that. Well, that's that's totally valid. I'm glad we touched on Manning Cast. Yeah. Uh, in two weeks, Stumpers, you heard it here first. Ty's gonna be here. Colts Ravens. We're uh. We're going to do our, our, a live recording, no edits. Um, We're like a live this, live broadcast? Yeah. Oh, cool. That's news to me, too. Stumpers rolling or something. Awesome. <laughs> uh, this made it up as we went. Do you guys want to – let's morph into the basketball for a sec. So, I don't know if anyone's heard, Ben Simmons is on the trading block. Shoot me. <laughs> Man, fucking you. Uh, one thing that Tyler and I heard was that he was going to be traded to the Denver Nuggets. 
excuse me, the Denver Nuggets for Jamal Murray. What is everyone's feeling on that? <laughs> I um I don't like the trade really for um for Denver at all. Um, I, I I'm not going to give up on Jamal Murray. I think Jamal Murray could end up being a better player than what Ben Simmons was at one point in his career. So the fact that you have to take Ben Simmons, who's a declining player, and you have Jamal, who has a high ceiling, no, I don't like it at all. Also, I mean, I think we talked with this, Jay. Um, Denver, or sorry, Philly would take some of De- uh, Ben's contract still, or like maybe maybe majority of it. I'm not sure. Um, that helps it out a little bit, if that's the case. But if Denver, has to, take do over, that. If Denver has to take over that whole contract, plus the things I just said there, I hate that trade for Denver so much. Jamal's a max contract as well, right? Fair, so. but I'm saying you're getting a way better. Yeah. I think you're getting someone with a way higher ceiling, though, with a max contract for him, for Jamal, than a declining player for a max contract. So, I hate that. No, terrible uh, deal. Uh, I'm just pardon? saying, even <laughs> what? Sorry, no. But yeah, terrible deal for Denver. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's a terrible deal for Denver, though. Yeah. I hate that, too. I hate it. For Why Denver. do you look so confused? I agreed with you. <laughs> I just thought your, your mic cut out. I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you guys are both out to lunch if you guys think that Philly would ship Ben Simmons for Jamal Murray and the contract with no – like, you understand Jamal Murray is sitting out an entire NBA season. So let's say Jamal Murray has three years left on said deal. Mm-hmm. You now only get two years of service off him. You have no idea what he looks like post-catastrophic knee injury. I don't understand how you guys think that Philly's going to be like, here, take Ben Simmons. He wants out. Because you already know what Ben Simmons looks like right now, and I know you are high on it, saying that Ben Simmons is going to come back. I'm not saying that's out of the question. I think it's just a. I think there's a higher chance that Jamal Murray comes back and has a good season than Ben Simmons turns it around and becomes a fucking good player again. Because right now he's 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 fine. He's not he's not up echelon though. Who's fine? Ben Ben Simmons. He's fine. He's not okay. good anymore. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm so ready for the NBA, NBA season to fucking start. Oh, I am too. All I can't the, wait. Uh, I'll be in the fantasy draft and you draft him like fucking second round. Like you think he's going to do something and you just shit the bed. Like that's, I hope, I hope that happens. Basketball fantasy sucks. I'm not doing it. A B in addition to that, I think everybody is just jumping in on Ben, ben Simmons is mediocre. I think is, or would you say he's not upper echelon? No, he's mediocre. He's fine. Yeah. Okay. I, I, if you, I cause think, I know that you don't look at like even Lonzo ball as like an upper echelon, right? You look at him as like a think, mediocre, right? They're not in the same fucking conversation. That's what I mean. Like so that's what I mean. So that's where we differ right now. It's like it's just I, I I can't get on that. I can't get on that page with you. I think in addition, in addition to this whole fucking thing, and I don't know if this is a hot take. Ben Simmons is better than Jamal Murray as a complete basketball player. I don't I don't think I'm fucking nuts for that. I don't. I really don't. There's more than one element to basketball than just jump shots. It's huge. And I think everyone's just piling on Today, it. In today's day and age, if you can't take a jump shot, though, sure, you can do other yeah. things. If you can't take a jump shot, you're just so easy. to You become so easy to defend, I think. And I think it, it's showing now, yeah. and especially in the playoffs. It's the start of his decline. It's the start of a Shout massive, out. rapid decline. Than who is a moot point anyways if Ben Simmons decides he's not going to play because he has a little temper tantrum that's still going. Yeah. No, he's, he's, he's got to be moved. Daryl Moore is moved for this all. Daryl Moore should have moved him. <laughs> He doesn't get moved by the beginning of the season. He's not going to play, and then he's just killing his own value. Then he's just as valuable as Jamal Murray is on the bench. Yeah. Uh, speaking of something that I agree with you guys on, I think I uh, Michael Porter Jr. signed a five-year, 207 max deal. Insane. Insane. And we are Michael Porter Jr., guys. That is just dumb. I tried. I tried hard to wrap my head around getting on, and being like, "Oh, like he's worth it and stuff." It's just, I can't find it. I can't. I really can't get on that side, man. It's it's so much money for someone who just hasn't done it yet. You know, to, to, hasn't earned that kind of cash. I don't think. So that's so that's actually the fourth. I'm reading this off ESPN. Word for word, the fourth max rookie contract extension to be handed out this off season. The group includes Luca, Trey, and Shy. Of those four guys, there is an argument to be made that. Michael Porter Jr. is far and away the four of those four dudes, right? I think yeah. it's, it's a pretty easy argument to be made, isn't it? Yeah, I thought so. And yeah. I just think it's insane that they felt the need to do that. I, I, I feel Maybe it's like... it's because of the fear of Jamal possibly not going back to what he is. You know what I mean? They were, the you, know, you know what it is, Ty? They're going to build a G League champion with Ben Simmons there because he's just he's not an upper echelon 
point guards. So they're just solidifying both levels of basketball, right? Their G League team, boom. Their NBA team, got to play Michael Porter. His Ben Simmons sucks. I can't, I can't wait to shit on Oh, they're a lifetime fifth-place team now. That's all they are. Yeah. They're going to finish fifth in the regular season and first, second round bounce. They're, they're Portland. They're the new Portland Trailblazers of the West. Can't wait. <laughs> um, I, I, I just – Stu and I are big Michael Porter Jr. guys, or at least were. I don't know if Stu still is, but oh yeah, love him. Just, just terrible money. Just not a good use of funds there. Could have hired they're Stu now, in the analytics department. There are four teams now with three max contracts, and Denver's one of them with Jokic and Murray and him. Wow. The other three are Brooklyn, which makes perfect sense. Uh, the Dubs, which makes perfect sense, and I imagine the Lakers. I was about to say the LA Lakers have to be third, right? Who's the third though on the Lakers? Are you stupid? Carmelo Anthony. I think it's Russ. Maybe Russ. <laughs> oh, Russ. Right, right, yeah. No, I think. I think. I could be wrong. I think. I forgot that he was there. <laughs> Melo makes I know. thirty million is fortieth season in the NBA. <laughs> yeah. hey, Dude, who's the third player in the Dubs? I mean, obviously, there's Curry and Clay. Remember, you know who the third one is? Fuck. Can I take a stab? Is it Iggy? No, not Iggy. Who's it's not Draymond. It? Right? He's a it's fucking like, Wiggins. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> That's a brutal one, eh? That hurts <laughs> so much. Oof, oof, oof. Hey, yeah. if, if I if I could do just a quick one last basketball thing, is it beneficial for both the Timberwolves and Anthony? Carl Anthony Towns to be traded is is are we on the same page here? Like both they just need to both move on. At this point, there's like, like a weird yeah, there was a weird press conference thing yesterday for opening <laughs> day. It's a train wreck of an organization. Or you know what? The owners just need to sell it to somebody who actually knows what the fuck they're doing. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, yeah, because I mean, like, sorry, it was Carl Anthony Towns. Who's the other guy you just mentioned? I'm sorry. Uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves. The team he plays for. Oh, you just, just said. Oh, you just. Oh, they just need to part ways. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Uh, um, Minnesota is a state in uh, yeah, in America. Never true, been. True. Don't know. Never been in my life. Never going. Don't have a passport. Don't care. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I think so. Right. I, they're kind of in like that rebuild mode anyway. Right. Like they should be at least. I guess like you you want to rebuild around Carl like that, but if he doesn't want to be there, then sure, ship him, start over. I guess. Yeah, I just. I heard that and I'm like, it makes total sense. Cat's really good. Uh, it just doesn't work there. Move him for assets and maybe get lucky in a draft. To be fair to Cat, too, Cat's head is probably in like for for obvious reasons in just a terrible place after the last season just happened to him. I couldn't imagine. So honestly, I don't really blame Cat for any like kind of bad things he said. I wouldn't take. I wouldn't look at him like personally and be like, oh, like you know, you're just like a bitch or whatever. Like that, it's nothing like that. But yeah, maybe it is just time for him. He needs a fresh start. He needs to get his head right somewhere else, sort of thing. That could be the best move, just for him too, not even just for the Timberwolves, for him personally. True, true. Uh, you guys want to talk some fucking NFL? Uh, Tyler, you and I were awful last week. We we're uh, one and three each. Yeah, you know, one in three each. You won your your uh, twenty dollar bet with me on the Cowboys. I just want the well, Dallas game. That's I mean, honestly, just care about Dallas doing well. Um, that's really <laughs> all I give a shit about. Uh, Stu had a good week, three and one. Uh, it was nice of you to lend him your picks, Ty. So we, we didn't have a guy dragging ass all. all you season, know, I couldn't so. afford it. Appreciate it. Crazy. Uh, any any feel on last week? Anything that really stood out to you guys, games wise? Other than the cold sucking, Minnesota showed me something. I don't know if it's the Seahawks, a product of them being bad right now, but Minnesota really showed me something, man. Their offense played great. And uh, yeah, their defense looked okay, which was surprising because it did look so bad at the start. So maybe I, Stu, you said it. And I think you did too, Jay. You were saying, like, we don't know if Minnesota's bad this year. And I was like, all in, like, just they're terrible. First two games happen. And then week three, they come out. So I was probably – I could have been wrong. Uh, Minnesota looked great last week, so we'll see how they uh, the rest of their season goes. Jay had them winning the division. What are you talking about? No, no, that's what I mean. You and Jay had them doing well, right? And then oh, I, sorry. I, and I, I just gave up on them. I gave up on them instantly in the season. Cousins looks fucking unreal. He's definitely going to oh. fuck up this week now that I'm starting him. <laughs> yeah, how it goes, right? Yeah, he's gonna eat fucking Cheerios all fucking week. He's gonna put up nothing. Cheerios. But <laughs> super weird, so super weird analogy, Dad. 
<laughs> well done. I mean, zeros. You're going to put up zeros. Uh, we know that now. Zero touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got it. It's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know that the Seahawks are that that good, that complete of a team. I'm taking it with a grain of salt any team that beats Indy. I know we're really early in the season. We're in the f- We'd usually be wrapping up the first quarter of the season now. Um, but yeah, I'm not I'm not sure on Seattle. It was a nice win for Minnesota. And they're you know, they're slim hopes of winning that division. Uh yeah, listen, you James, well, you're the C- you're the Colts fan, so you have more of a right to be angry about this and stuff, but I wouldn't give up yet. They still have they've had a tough start to the season, right? Playing the Seahawks, playing the Rams. And I mean, Titans, I don't know if they're like that awful defense, but their their offense can do some things, right? So I, I think Colts have better days coming right now. But again, they have a pretty tough schedule though, right? Like looking at it, they have fucking Miami next week should be a good one, but then Ravens and then Niners after the Texans and then Titans again, and then ah, Jags, Buffalo. They just have a 500 looking season, you know? Like they have some really tough matchups coming up. That's, that's you know, kind. sorry, Ty. Sorry, Stu. Go ahead. You want to hear my bold, bold prediction for the week? Love it. I think the Colts win. That's that's one part of it against Miami. That's, that's bold as shit. Holy fuck! The Jets and the Colts break their fucking <laughs> winless season this week. I'm with you, I'm with you. Def, honestly, I'm with you more on the Jets. They got to win you. at some point. This is the game they won. I agree. I, yeah. I and you know what? At least not pussies always taking the easy bets like some people. Um, yeah. yeah so I don't know if they're going to cover in Dallas I, week after week. So it's a pussy bet. Yeah, go fuck yourself. If we uh, if we're going money line, I'm taking the Jets and the uh, and the Colts cool. this week. Nice. Well done. I like that. Uh, I think my reaction to this all is. Watching the Chiefs and Chargers, especially late down the stretch, the Chargers might actually be really good. Who's your buddy that likes not? Uh, who's your buddy that likes the Chargers? Huh? Oh, Dustin, Dustin Jackson, lifetime Dustin. friend, great guy. Shut up! Why did you have to say lifetime friend? Like you're so he knows. I don't want him to think I'm about, we broke up or anything. I was going to say we broke up for a week with grade nine. Um, <laughs> shout out, shout out to Dustin oh, Jackson. Awesome. Maybe, maybe they're actually good. This this is the big game for the Chargers following that big one. Good team. <laughs> They follow that up and they handle the Raiders on Monday night and sort of stamp that division as theirs. Even with the loss, nobody really believes in what the Broncos are doing. They've had the soft one of the softest schedules in the NFL. Uh, Chargers beat the Raiders here on Monday. That is massive. And I don't yeah. think any of us have that game. So it's really, really big. Uh, Chiefs, I guess, sort of look human. Uh, one game I wanted to ask you about, Ty, and sort of – Hinted yep. at it. The fantasy football one was. Did you think of the Ravens finish against the Lions? I, I get, dude. I, I already, I already said it. I'm, 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 I'm okay now. Uh, the week's passed. Fantasy's done. Whatever. I was upset about it. I also think that um, Lions fans bitching about it. They're very lucky that they were in that position. I, I watched that game super close because I had a lot going on fantasy wise that game. And again, Marquise Brown dropped two like deep ones, deep ones that were in his hands. Nobody fucking touched it. Also one in the end zone that got tipped, but basically into his hands also dropped. So that's two for sure yeah. touchdowns and one that he could have possibly broken touchdown. It should not have been that fucking close whatsoever. I think even bigger than that, I thought you were gonna you're actually gonna talk about the fact the Ra- the Ravens should have had a delay a game. That's what I'm I saying. The- I, I'm I'm referring to that though because that's the obvious thing that I think I, I, yeah, I, yeah. we're bringing up, right? Sorry, I should have I should have specified that, but. It doesn't matter to me. It, it, they were very lucky to be in that position. They were getting beat deep all fucking game and just lucky breaks that aren't going to happen really any other weeks. You're not going to have drops like that from pros. So, sure, yes, delay of game, whatever things happen in a football game, but they were very lucky to be in that position. True. Uh, very, very impressed with the Cincinnati Bengals going in to the Pittsburgh Steelers home, home barn and throttling them for lack of a better breakdown, just handled them. Uh, yeah, winning by two touchdowns. There were a few. Najee Harris, I mean, it's not a fantasy pod, but Najee Harris had 19 targets, which is a problem when your rookie running back has 19 thrown targets, meaning Big Ben refuses to throw the ball down the field. And some of their wet weapons are only utilized through, you know, the deep, the deep ball. So... Mm-hmm. I don't know if the Steelers are just broken, if that was just a fluky week one win against the Bills, but issues there. 
Uh, I think he said at the start of the year, like Ben Simmons is, or sorry, Ben Simmons, sorry, Ben Roethlisberger is just fucking old. You know what I mean? Like I, maybe he just can't yeah. throw it. Like remember Payton couldn't throw it downfield then, and then like his last last season, right? Don't don't put them in the same conversation ever. It's the same kind of thing though. It's just <laughs> old old quarterbacks that were really good. Not obviously right. Ben was never but Payton. Yeah. But old quarterbacks that just don't have it anymore. I think like, it could just be a simple case of that. Fact at the uh, very very true. Uh, with the one o'clock. Stu, Saints, Pats, what did that look like? Looks pretty fucking good from over here. It's a loser. It <laughs> looks I, so good. That uh, defense looked like a fucking problem. It's like they were playing a rookie quarterback. It was. It was exactly like that. <laughs> a rookie quarterback. <laughs> a rookie quarterback with the best coach of all time and still made them look like children. Yeah, uh, like yeah I know. It's, it's, a very, it's an impressive one. I agree. It, it looked like it was pretty sound. Uh, Guys, best game of the fucking day, day, not night, was Raiders Dolphins. That was back and forth. It's like having a team in Vegas has brought a lot of excitement for some coincidence, right? Some crazy coincidence. Yeah. I missed I missed overtime because the NFL fucking what was it, Sunday ticket or whatever. It fucking cut off at overtime. I was like scrambling to find it on the cable box and it fucking ended by the time I found it. Oh, then you scramble for the stream, and then the stream's behind. Then you're like, I already seen this part of the game. No, I was at, oh, okay. Yeah, I was at the bar. So oh, I, fuck. I, uh, That's brutal, man. I didn't do it on cable. I think I messaged you guys in the chat. I was just saying, like, um, which kind of sucks that you missed overtime because the Raiders have done this kind of a few weeks now where it's like the end of their games are so exciting. I found, like, this the whole game, though, I was watching. I was like, yeah, this is okay. It just looks like two teams kind of battling for something that's very, like, chess matchy. And then at the end of the game, it's just so much fun. And then Brissette, like, Fucking um, breaks into the breaks in the breaks in the end zone for the touchdown, gets the two point, and then they go into overtime. And yeah, no, just crazy endings to their games right now. Yeah, I I think two and not playing is a huge deal for the fish. Uh, I'm not using huge. it as an excuse, but my two big my two big dogs coming out of divisions were very quarterback dependent, and Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tua both being hurt, Jay Sauer. So yeah, so yeah, the the other. I think the best game of the entire Sunday, because I just mentioned the uh, the best day game. I think Niners Packers turned out to be a really good football game. I will raise my hand and say I probably counted the Packers out too soon. Uh, they are fucking still really good on offense. Aaron Rodgers is still Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, they uh, they play the Saints tomorrow. They pump the Saints. That, that like he just looked like a different human, and I, I, I we we all agreed on this pod. Lions game was a whatever game. The Niners are a good football team. Do they have flaws? They're flawed. I don't think they're very defensively flawed. And he just carved them. Yeah, he carved them. And I I know Stu. I, I don't think Stu watched the game, but watching the end of that Niners game, I think everybody in the world watching it was like, fuck, man. 30 seconds and one timeout, that's way too much time for Oh, Niners. like, dude, any Niners game fans celebrating that? Again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to say I'm a diehard Niners fan at all. I just, I watched them just because my dad's watched them all my life. There's no way, like, anyone who's celebrating that, it's like, dude, what are you doing? It's the same if you, it's not the same as if you get Brady, very similer conversation of if you get Brady the yeah. ball 37 with the you're timeout. Right. Like, that's, it's too much, way too much time, especially when you have Devontae Adams, you're throwing the ball downfield to, too. You know, he's going to get open in the mid, midfield when you're playing those fucking prevent zone defenses or whatever. You know, I will say the analytic world, the clock management crowd. Actually, I think the NFL is more of a clock management crowd. And clock management was really dissected that Kyle Kuzcheck. I've been really sucking the names lately. Kyle Kuzcheck should not have gone the end zone when he did. There was 37 seconds left when he got crossed there. They're down six points. Mm. You don't go down at the one to line back up, potentially get a full start penalty, a holding penalty not get in everything rushed. I, I don't think I'm going to blame Kyle Shanahan mm. or, you know, the guy who got into the end zone or Jimmy G. I'm more going to blame the fact that Niners took a quarter and a half to wake up. I was, gonna say, I, I was, I honestly, I completely agree with you. As I was watching that game, I thought it was a product of, it's like, it's almost like the Niners hadn't been tested enough in this season, right? They start off with Detroit and then like, they just haven't had very tough matchups. And then they got in the game with Green Bay and like, holy fuck, like we're playing a fucking NFL team. And then, yeah, it just took them a while to wake up. I, I Again, I don't think the Niners are a bad team either. I think they're still a solid team. They just kind of, they played that their first real test and they battled back too. Like they were in a hole in the first half and they battled back and they're still there. So, 
but yeah, it's it's more of a it's more of a uh, definitely an indication that the Green Bay is fucking for real again this season. I think before before the we Green Bay. Hop, before we hop into the Monday Nighters, <laughs> do yeah, you, like knowing what you know of the Packers Niners, waking up Monday morning, were you surprised the Packers beat them? I watched the game. I I know you said I didn't. Oh, you did. Oh, you, I didn't know you did. Sorry, I didn't know. Yeah, I was working, so I I I watched it pretty casually for the first most of it. But the end of the game, I got to watch pretty closely just because we were like cleaning up. So I was like, I was actually invested in the end, which was the important part. I'm such an idiot because I drove by you on Sunday. I drove by you to go pick up Yoko. I totally fucking forgot. I totally yeah. forgot you watched the game. Yeah. I, like, don't, like, you're, you're not wrong to assume I would have been in bed had I not been working. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I was shocked. I, Niners were probably one of my favorite plays of the weekend. I really yeah, liked yeah. them. I'd be lying to you guys. Favorite player of the weekend? Philadelphia Eagles. Eight shit. They were terrible. There was not a worse team that I watched all weekend, even college ball. Yeah. The they team. were a turnstile, and the Chiefs faced them this week. Whew. They're going to uh, get fucking oh, it's pumped. This is good for the Chiefs, honestly. Like, they're going to get a nice little confidence. They're going to go beat up on a team. Like, hey, yeah, we're still the Chiefs and shit, man. Because holy fuck, that Philly just... Imagine they go one and three in the Eagles. I think Jalen Hurts is going to have an incredible game. But because the Chiefs defense has looked bad. Oh, it's soft. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You you think that you... I'm not saying that the Chiefs are going to lose. Don't get... Don't be... No, no. I give you a lot of credit. If you can predict Jalen Hurts after what I've seen... I guess it's recency bias three nights ago, completing more than 15 passes. I don't even know that he's able to like take a three step drop. They are a disaster up front. They're a disaster. They ran the ball three times between mm-hmm. running backs on Monday. What game planning is that? And the guy, the coach was wearing a beat Dallas shirt. And I'd sip the Kool Aid. I'm like, they, yeah. weren't, they weren't even, um, they weren't even like out of it for too long in the game. Like by the end of it, it was, it was a shit show, right? But for like the start of like for the first three quarters, like it was still a game where you could manage clock and actually run the ball still. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, oh, why were they not having any ground game whatsoever? Just, just like the, the game planning in NFL coaches, there's 32 jobs. That guy goes and gets a gig and he's like, you know what? We're going to run the football three times. Between the tackle. Shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. It's so dumb. Uh, before we move on to our picks this week, Stu, I'll ask you first. Is Dallas for real? Kind of seems like it. Yeah. Ty. You already know. You already know. I said it at the start of the season. So, yes, I still think they're for real. Still agree about, but, uh, yeah. It bothers, it, it bothers me when people like you say they're for real because you don't even know why they're for real. I know why they're for real. I know why they're for real. As far as the regular season goes, I don't think they're for real. As far as a playoff push goes, they're not a contender by any stretch. I think they're for real that the fact that they're going to put up a good regular season uh, record. I've said this already because they have a weak schedule and they do have a fire, like a lot of fire in their offense right now. Defense is shaky that I'm not going to take anything from the Eagles game. You know what I mean? I know I get it. Their defense is shaky, but no, we've seen. I disagree. A, I, I you did, think their I, defense is solid? I think their defense is definitely a stock I would buy. I would buy it's on par with their offense. You think their their defense is going to steal them games when no. their offense is? No, I think their defense like is a problem for them. Their defense is definitely a weakness of theirs. I feel like their defense was able to neutralize a very good San Diego or San Diego, very good Los Angeles team, Chargers team, okay. and they went toe to toe with the Bucks. Were they though, or were they were they subject to bad call, bad officiating because they had two touchdowns taking back the Chargers? And I think a lot of people would disagree with those calls that were made on the Chargers to take back those touchdowns. Uh, all I'm saying is Mika Parsons, Trevon Diggs, that what that team has done on defense draft-wise and bringing in Dan Quinn, a simpler philosophy, they yeah. also – they boat-raced Philadelphia without their ba- their best pass rusher. Like, they have Mika Parsons playing out of position. He's a linebacker. They have him mm-hmm. playing on the line. When they get the Marcus Lawrence back, it's a very, very good problem to have is you can now move your linebacker back. I'm just saying I think that is why I buy them by them being better than they are. And yeah, sure, they play in the NFC least, as nerds will call it, but I just think they're they're like they're looking like an 11 win team, 10 11 win team, which is easy yeah. in the playoffs, right? Easily in the NFC East. Yes, absolutely. But yeah, no, they make a good point with they, that's six games out of the playoffs for the yeah. fucking yeah. NFC East. Yeah, no, exactly. Um I, uh, uh, you make a good point with Diggs, though. I agree with you there though, too. Like he's looked, he looked I mean, it was just the Eagles that I saw him like mainly kind of watch closely, but yeah, no, he looked he looked phenomenal against them. 
before we jump into our picks as well, uh, Richard Sherman signs the Bucks. Big deal. Saw that deal. today. Yeah. What do you think, Ty? Big deal. Small deal. Uh, I think it's. I think anything. Eh. Any, but anything that the Bucks can add to their secondary is huge, isn't it? You know what I mean? Is that not? Is that not? Is that not fair? I think that's, that's it, massive. It, anything's an improvement. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Like yeah. the guy still has some value, but I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think he's, he's a game changer. I no, no, he's not a game changer, but he's definitely yeah. a good stopgap till you get healthy in the secondary. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Sure. Like anything they could grab that could, and the fact he's still available is just. So Brady. It's weird too. It's like I feel like NFL is not like other sports where like you can have a guy that's like really chirpy, like Richard Sherman, like a basketball and like NBA, like NHL, and they have a serve a purpose where they get in guys' heads. I feel like that doesn't happen as much as football. Like if you have a trash talker, guys don't care as much. It seems like I was like I don't think you're gonna shut down a receiver just because you get inside their head like through trash talking. As far as like other sports no. where you can do that, right? Like I, I so I think that's like the biggest thing he serves is like that kind of like pessimist sort of like on the or like pest on the Love. field. He's really smart. He's a really smart and coverage guy. He, okay. He, he's very rarely beaten due to positioning. He might not be the most athletic. He may not be a great tackler. He's a very spot guy. He's in the right spot. Play not always. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's definitely more of a bigger deal than Stu's making it out to be, but Twitter and Instagram is making it out to be like he's going to be a shutdown corner, which he's not. There's, there's definitely a middle zone. Right? That's what I mean is that he's I'm, – I'm seeing all these takes about how – like Richard Sherman is a shell of himself, sure. like what he was in in Seattle. Any any like corner at that yeah. age, right? Any exactly. Corner. Like and yeah, no fault of his own. He's just what is he thirty three? Yeah, he's ancient in the NFL yeah. days. Uh, yeah. Okay. I want to start with Stu smoking, smoking gun Stu. Uh, record on the season five and seven. He's going for five hundred or over, baby. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. I don't even pick. remember my fucking picks. So your first pick, you cucko, was Chiefs no, no, minus I, seven. I'll, I'll get them. I'll remember. You said Chiefs minus seven. Chiefs minus seven, yeah, because, you know, Philly. <laughs> 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 they look so bad. Oh, man. Yeah, I, the Chiefs, they need this confidence game. Tyler is 100% right. Like They need to just beat the shit out of them, and I don't think they're going to stop. No, yeah, it's gonna be like the Patriots yeah. back, like when like Belichick would be like they'd be up like thirty and be like, "Okay, hey, let's throw let's throw verticals, let's let's, let's really put it down." Yeah. So right. them them only getting a touchdown is is a little like I I, th- I think they'll they'll beat them by two or three. Yeah, uh, Tyler, I, I'm just gonna let the stumpers know your your mind here. Uh, you believe that there are easy games, right? They're easy, like. They cannot miss NFL games. Would you say the Chiefs minus seven would be one of those? I think so. Yeah, I think so for sure. Cool. I just, I just wanted to clarify for the uh, anyone that's against it. Philly. <laughs> Dallas just beat up on them by two touchdowns or three touchdowns. Like, there's there's no fucking way. Or was uh, it two by the end of the game? Am I wrong? Do you guys, do you guys think Andy Reid being out is a big deal? Uh, can he not make the calls from home? Can he not just sit on his couch and be like, "Hey, do this." <laughs> Like what? <laughs> the, you got text the assistant coach. Like what the fuck? I, I don't know. I don't know if that's a big deal. Honestly, you're right. It, it, it is a relatively big deal, but it's the it's it's the Eagles that is the big thing for me. In Philly, in Philly, I think is why this. I feel like the home field for the Chiefs would be silly. It'd be like six points. This could be closer to two touchdown favorites. Yeah, in Philly outdoors, if Fletcher Cox plays. There's always the, the potential for injury. Tyree Kill hasn't looked himself. I'm t- I'm playing devil's advocate. I like the Chiefs here. I also yeah. really like the Chiefs last week, and we know how that turned out. So, a bit True. wrong. Tyler, yeah. Which I feel like all your picks are really easy, bro. I feel like you have- <laughs> <laughs> they're never easy. That's my thing. I don't, I don't go easy picks. Um, Bills minus seventeen and a half, hammering that this week, man. Against Houston, their offense looks. I I don't think it's crazy to say their best. They're the best. They have the best offense in the league at the moment. It looks the best. Josh Allen last week. I know it was a shit team they were playing, but just was unstoppable. Like you know, what I mean, Matt I, Stafford. Matt Stafford called and wanted to know if we think of the Rams. Rams are the best offense in the league right now. I, I don't know, man. I think Josh Allen is. Um, Unstoppable right now, and like we we just mentioned three of the we just mentioned their three receivers last year. I know they were playing the WFT, but we mentioned in the fantasy uh fantasy um episode we did. 
they look good right now, man. They're rolling. They have um, yeah. So uh, it's Bills. Bills minus seventeen and a half against a shitty Houston team this week. Like Jay said, I think that's easy pick. Minus sixteen and a half. Or uh, sixteen and a half. Yeah, sixteen and a half. Sorry, sixteen and a half. It's so easy. I thought I'd add an extra points too. So I just make it twenty. Make it <laughs> fucking twenty. <Jay. laughs> I mean, I think either way, it's fine. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna hate this this one. You specifically, Ty. I know we'll get. We'll understand it. I feel like the Bills are an easy W here. I feel like they get hurt. someone gets hurt here. One of those games, you're not going to be going full speed the entire game. It's going to be such a blowout. I have a bad feeling for Bills Mafia. Someone gets hurt in this game that is going to be no. You're for- here. Don't know. This is an easy one to see through, man. You're hoping for it because you don't want no. the Bills to do well this year, and it's it's petty. It's just petty Jay coming out Dude. hoping for injuries. I don't think Jay gives a shit about the Bills. Bills, no, no, I- yeah, no. He just has Bills. I think not winning their division, and I just think that's crazy. Yeah, I, I also I also don't have the Bucks winning the division. I understand you don't have the NFC West winning the the going to the going to the uh, playoffs either. So true. I uh, I'm gonna open with Lions plus three. Was very wrong on Justin Fields potentially shocking the world last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think the Bears are very good uh, on either side. I've been happy with sort of how the Lions have looked for one of the worst teams in the NFL. Uh, I think Matt Nagy is getting a lot of shit on him for how Justin Fields and the Bears looked last week. I think people forget who they played. They were playing a really good, like, potential Super Bowl winner in the Brown. Uh, so, yeah, I, I like the Lions plus three. I just don't think Justin Fields is ready. He's a typical should have sat the entire first fucking year. Let Andy Dalton sort of go get you four or five wins and figure it out. But Lions plus three. Still oh, like- Let's just get the Homer pick out of the way. Yeah, I, I, you're such a joke. You're so, like yeah. every week it's gonna be bold, like you, the Linden House teams. They're gonna. I'm pretty sure you said Saints plus plus three last week and Pats minus three. You're gonna get one of them right. That was the only one you got wrong. You love those two teams. Uh, Saints minus seven and a half against the Giants. Giants, yeah. I really do like that in New Orleans or in. Oh, New you Ch- like it now, do you? <laughs> In yeah. Jacksonville or in New Orleans? In, it, it's in New Orleans for the first time because they didn't get the first home game because it was in Jacksonville. So they have been displaced. It's a Steve Gleason comeback game. <laughs> it's going to be a new Steve Gleason. It's going to be Josh Harris. So it's going to be Taysom Hill. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Giants are shit. Tyler, if you want to yeah, oh, yeah. just look up Steve Gleason. This is this – <laughs> Uh, this is definitely a Daniel Jones supported podcast, but I don't think it's very good. I think Daniel Jones gets rocked this week, so I, I really like it. Uh, yeah, Tyler, that, I told everyone to pick up Daniel Jones last week. I'm telling everyone to drop him this week. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is the opposite of a stream. This is an immediate yeah, drop. Just just get rid of him. Take it back. <laughs> take it back when you need him. He's going to be available. Ty, two. Oh, uh, I got uh, – this is, goes against everything I've said against Dallas this week. I thought this was going to be one of their easier games, but uh, the Panthers are really showing it right now. So I have uh, Panthers plus four and a half uh, going into – I think I believe it's in Dallas actually too, but I just I, – You, you – I hate I hate that. I, we're like reversing sides here. Why? Like Dallas. Because I've been back in the Panthers this year, and you like the Cowboys, and we've yeah. actually just uh, – do you think Carolina wins or just covers? No, I think uh, well, no, I think Carolina just covers. I don't know if they're going to win. I don't know that at all. I just think it's going to be closer than that. I think the but again, I think Carolina could go in and beat Dallas. So Dallas yes. is Carolina has looked good so far, man. Like Darnold's looked well. Their defense is yeah. stellar, right? So I was about to ask Stu who their quarterback, Carolina's quarterback, was if they had an issue. Or not. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but Sam Darnold is a dark horse. He's been. <laughs> Filling it all year. Yeah, it's and I, I, can't under the radar. On, I, I can't not bet on Panthers covering this because I have Darnold in my fantasy. So I just, I just have I, the more, the more, the more stuff I put out there for them, the better it's going to work. I'm really trying to manifest a good fantasy week. Stu, if I put a gun to your head to pick a side there, Carolina, Dallas, where would you go? Pick a what? A side. Pick a side, like Carolina, Atlanta, Dallas. Atlanta and Dallas. Carolina. I thought you said Atlanta. I was like, what? Uh, Carolina. Yeah, okay. Same. Same as Ty. I was about to say it's a shocker. Uh, I'm on my own again with the pick. 
I was going to go Washington football team minus one. Uh, I can't say I love this game. I hate that we have this thing where we pick four set. We can never pick the same games. Uh, minus one, one and a half, depending where in Atlanta. They really need this one. You lose this one. It's going to be really, really fucking shitty for that division and their potential to win it. Not overly confident, but I got that. It's, it's a hard one, as Ty would say. Hard one. That's a tough one, man. And I respect it, you know, because you didn't go fucking. Who had an easy one? Uh, no one actually. No, Chiefs. Chiefs minus seven is an easy one. Still, sure, throw it to the chalkboard. That's fine. But yeah, Jay, good for you, man. Really went, went for it. Um, I hate that pick. I hate that pick, though. We just talked about how WFT is a fucking punching bag for any offense right now. Atlanta still has weapons. I know they haven't done much this year, but it's like they could come out and put up like thirty points still. So or forty points. Do you think Washington's going to compete with that? Uh, Matt Ryan could become it like his MVP self as well. Ty, I'm banking on what we've seen from Matt Ryan and the boys yeah. putting up 17 in New York is really what I'm looking at. And I know it's fast track at, in Atlanta. I just don't think, I don't think they're good enough to take Like, I don't love the game, but I'm not taking Atlanta plus one and a half. Yeah. I, I, that's really what more what I'm saying. I, I would prefer Washington and, Maybe the defense, the defensive line figures it out, but Chelsea, uh, Stu, your third pick, Orf. Shout out Linden. Pats plus seven, and the reason I'm taking this, I'm not saying the Pats are going to win. It's because I hate the Bucks. <laughs> that because football is magic. That this game goes to the last second. Oh, like hide. I just don't goal. see any angle. Or, or, I don't know, maybe like a fucking touchdown to win by like four or something like that. But, yeah. Any I, angle you've got here, I'm, man. Like, I'm watching this game on mute, by the way. I don't want to hear any of the... the most watched regular season game in NFL history. Nope. It's a sick... It is a really good Sunday nighter. I, I enjoy this. Even if the teams don't necessarily match up, like, it's the story behind it's great. And I... It's not, I don't think it's, I think it's just going to be a classic. I think it's going to ha- come within seven points. Honestly, Stu, your call has been bang on the last, like, at least week. So I'm sure <laughs> I'm in 100% just based on Stu's integrity. Your, Stu, your <laughs> picks have been great, like, the past seven days. I'm yeah. Good. Hey, sports change every week, week, day to day. All right. My opinions change, and I'm with Stu here once again. Fair. Tyler, yes. That were entirely gut. It was just, Chiefs are going to do well because they need the confidence. Saints are going to do well because they're home. And the Pats plus seven because it's such a good game. It has to come down to the last fucking minute. It's Sunday night. It has to deliver. Otherwise, fuck yeah. NFL. Got to do it. Tyler. Yes, yes, sir. sir. <laughs> I was just reading with the notes. Uh, Minnesota plus two. Again, I've, we were just talking about this, but I love what Minnesota did uh, against the Seattle. Uh, Seattle. Seattle uh, against Seattle. Fucking, um, uh, I don't think the Seahawks, I'm not ready to give up on them yet. I just think Minnesota really showed me something. Their defense stepped up and their offense just looked fucking great. Uh, so love them against the Browns. Again, I'm not convinced on the Browns defense yet. I'm, I know they've been, they're statistically like best, best, best like, uh, like top five, I think right now. I'm not, conv- I'm not sold yet though. Um, so yeah, give me uh, Minnesota there. And I think Kirk Cousins keeps it going. And I think, uh, Adam Thielen keeps the touchdown uh, streak going too, man. He's got a touchdown each game right now. So let's uh, see that. Keep riding. Cool, 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 cool. That game I will just watch. I have no no idea. I don't even know where I would lean there. Uh, I'm going to go back to the well, guys, because it worked so well from last week. I'm going to go with the San Francisco 49ers, minus three. Would not be shocked if this ends up being a push. Um. You guys didn't leave me a ton of games to pick here, so thanks a lot. Yep. Uh, I think they get back on track. I think Seattle reverts back to this pound the ground. As soon as Seattle loses a game, they go to this weird philosophy where they have to run the ball 100 times, where their offense is most fluid whenever the best player in most games is there, which is Russ. Yeah. Uh, Niners lose two in a row, really opens the door for a team like the Rams. <laughs> I'm going to go Niners, minus three. Don't love it, but got to do it. Uh, I'm going to rhyme off my fourth one, and then we'll go back up. Okay. I have Cardinals plus five against the Rams. 
I told someone last week, I hope the Rams beat the Bucks, which they did. The Rams are going to get overvalued the rest of this way until they have like a stinker. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think that should truly be five. That should be close. Like Kyler Murray's playing as if he's capable of covering any line against any team. Um, just on that end of it, we shall see. Didn't love it, but go ahead, Tyler. Oh, um, uh, as as I would say, and Jay concurs, uh, we have an easy one here. Titans minus seven over the Jets. This should be at least wrong. No, no, this is an easy one. I know, and th- this is crazy too. I can't wait for the, the end of this episode when uh, Super uh, runs his mouth. But uh, minus seven for the Titans should be simple. It should be easy money. Um, I don't think there's much to be said about this. Man. The Jets are the fucking Jets, and they're gonna get fucked up. I think the Titans even the Titans don't even be a defensive play in fantasy this week because that like the rookie quarterback just been throwing fucking ducks all year. So, yeah. Stu, Stu, tell, Stu, tell them what we think. What do we think of this game? Jets are gonna win, bro. Oh, it's so stupid. Jets it's are gonna win. A lot. In what Jets. world? In what fucking world, man? Yeah, guys, does Derrick Henry of, not get 170 yeah. yards rushing this game? What's doing? Oh, my gut tells me the Jets are gonna win. <laughs> my gut, Stu's fucking gut. You're eating way too much fattening food this week. This is terrible. Junk food all week, man. I will all say, guys, one of the big lines loses this week. Okay, one of the big lines. There's three. There's four of them technically. I don't really count the Saints game. Saint Chiefs, Patriots, Bills would hurt, or Titans. One of those four lose. It's a survivor week that going to prove why that is the hardest thing to do in the world and i think the titans are the most likely to get it done to lose i mean mm-hmm. because it's easy do you think the titans lose like they just don't cover or do you think they lose the game they lose, lose. <laughs> Tyler, that's the bet what, this week. that's the bet that's the bet this week and i'll pay that you is the bet. The Jet- yeah, i'll pay you and i'll pay you double if the jets win double try, yeah fuck try it man four, four times four times whatever i pick if we go more, if we'll go like a money line bet on it, not just cover. We'll go a money line oh, bet on it. I pick this week. No, no that's not you. I and pick. I pay. Then I'm not paying out if they cover the spread. No, but I'm picking the game. It might be the Jets. I haven't decided. Yet. I gotta get pick, there. Pick the Jets, uh, pussy. Do it. I, I'm also gonna track <laughs> your easy picks. So you're zero and zero right now. And I have no easy picks. I have picked the Bengals in what the, the last like, right. two of the, the three. Your first one. No, I'm just, yeah, my first easy pick ever, ever. That's the, and I didn't even want to do it. You just told me to because there's no easy picks in football. There really isn't. It's the hardest thing to win at. I just, uh, I other, than Stu, other than Stu dominating last week. Uh, Stu. What I, what I do, just make picks. They always win. I go gut. Yeah. Gut, gut. What's your four, Stu? What's your fourth one? Uh, Ravens. Is it Ravens minus two? One. Ravens minus one. Against the Broncos. Yeah, I I'm not a hundred percent confident in this to be honest. I just no, but it's Ravens plus one. The Ravens really need this fucking win for the, that. for the confidence. That's all. That's all. Yeah. I'm betting confidence this week. No, I'm sorry, sense. guys. I'm sorry, it was Ravens plus yeah, one. It's Ravens. And not that he, it, it's just a, it's whoever wins that game anyway. Basically, Ravens. yeah. Ravens. Um, uh, yeah. yeah I kind of I, I like that too, man. I think the Ravens are a good fucking team. I I, I like that pick a lot. I think I think more than anything, I just don't believe. The Broncos are as good as the record shows. I think that line is more indicating that. And I want to just sort of circle back to the Titans game. Tyler, you're right. The world knows Derrick Henry is going to run for 107 yards, et cetera, et cetera. The people working in Las Vegas would not have the line at one touchdown if it was going to be as easy as you're claiming it's going to be. And I think I, I just think of one game specifically from this past week was Cardinals Jags, which we didn't touch on. That game was a lot closer. Yeah, because weird shit. Do, I get it. Weird shit happens. A kick, a, a kick six, 109 yards. I get it. Weird sure. shit I'm just saying. I'm just saying. When you're gonna, is the hardest. There's going to be less likely to make mistakes. So they're not going to be in a position to kick 66 yard field goals. All right. They're going to be in a position where they're on the goal line, like 70% of their fucking drives because the Jets are just a terrible fucking football team. You're right, buddy. You're you're always right, to be honest. <laughs> Don't do that to me. Don't fucking patronize me with back it out. Uh, anyway, though, let's uh, let's wrap that up. We have our picks in. Stumpers, thanks for listening. Uh, check us out on YouTube, Spotify, Instagram. Give us a like, comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, enjoy.
We just passed a foreign city sign, your feet on the dash. You got your favorite top on, I got my foot on the gas.